Hi, this is JP Morgan. In this video, we're going to teach you the camera settings and the lens choice for creating an interesting studio portrait. People ask me all the time, what camera settings should I use? We're going to talk about those camera settings, exactly where to set your camera, exactly what lens to use. Then we're going to light this portrait and we're going to show you exactly how to pose our model and that's going to give us a beautiful image. Well, special thanks to Sal Digital who's sponsoring this video, who's going to give Chanda a beautiful print when we're done, so we look forward to seeing that. So let's get started. Let's start with the lens and then we'll get to the camera settings. The lens that I choose most of the time when I'm doing a studio portrait like this is an 85 millimeter. I've got the uh, 35 to 150 Tamron here and I'm going to set that on 85 millimeters. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's the 85! 85 millimeters. The reason I choose an 85 millimeter is because it's a, a great compression on the face. The face doesn't get too wide, it doesn't get too flattened, it's just a great compression and it allows me to not have to get back too far. If you're in a confined space doing a studio portrait and you don't have all kinds of room, then that 85 allows you to get in close enough to be able to give you a nice portrait and you don't have to back way, way up. But most importantly, let's look at the compression really fast. So first off, here's our 85 millimeter. Now I'm gonna to go to 35 millimeter, or 50 millimeters and I'm gonna keep her head the same size in the frame Roughly. Look at that 50 millimeter. What happens to my background? I start looking down into the floor because I want to be slightly above her eyes. So each one of these positions, the 85 millimeter, I'm slightly above her eyes. To stay slightly above her eyes, I'm now looking into the floor when I get into that 50 millimeter lens. Look what happens when I go to the 35 and her face is going to be just starting to distort now. And I'm looking way down. So her features are becoming more distorted. It's not near as pleasing. I could go to a 200 millimeter lens, but the problem with going to the 200 millimeter lens is I'm gonna to have to be so far away from her that in a studio situation, you have to have a pretty big space. And I also feel like it starts to flatten out the face too much. It's not near as pleasing. So I choose an 85 millimeter. Another great lens that I've used for years is a 90 or a 100 millimeter macro lens. Uh, Tamron makes a 90 millimeter EF macro lens I used for years when I was shooting Canon EF and or a, a 100 millimeter macro. You can get those in most of the brands will give you a 100 millimeter macro which is a great portrait lens. Usually they're 2.8 which gives you enough shallow depth of field. Oh, we're going to talk about camera settings though coming right up. So there's my favorite lens, 85 or that 90 to 100 millimeter macro. The last thing that really is important to mention about lens is that the longer the lens, the smaller the background. We've got a huge background up here. Generally speaking, we're shooting on something that's a seven foot seamless, it's a small drop, and to have a background this big is just a luxury. Well, the wider your lens, the larger the background has to be to be able to stay on the background in the front sweeping or in the sides. So a longer lens allows you to have a smaller background and allows you to get the person further away from the background so that you can take advantage of lighting those two separately. That's really important as well and we'll talk about that as we get to our lighting. All right, so there's the lens choice. 85 millimeter, 90 or 100, that's my choice. All right, let's talk about camera settings. Now that we have our lens, we know exactly what lens we're gonna shoot on, now we need to know how to set up our camera. First off, I'm gonna set my camera white balance at 5600 degrees or flash. Flash is slightly cooler, but 5600 degrees, I like the look of 5600 degrees, so that's where I'm gonna set my, my camera, 5600 degrees. Then I'm gonna set my ISO at 100 ISO. I choose 100 ISO because we're on, studio, on stage here. We don't have any need to go with a faster ISO. There's just no reason for it. We have powerful strobes that are gonna allow us to give us the light that we want, and that is gonna give us a clean look on the sensor. As you push that ISO up higher and higher, the sensor starts to become more noisy, has digital noise, and you have to do recovery in, in uh, Photoshop, and there's just no reason to go through that process. 100 ISO is perfect in this situation. That's what we're gonna choose. 5,600 degrees, 100 ISO. Let's go on. Now, what's our aperture? All 
Now let's talk about the aperture. On a full frame camera, I generally will shoot at f4 on an 85 millimeter lens. The reason I choose f4 is because on a full frame sensor, you have very little depth of field. At 2.8, you can't keep the eye and the nose in focus, and I don't want the nose to fall way out of focus. So I'll go to f4. Now if I was on an APS-C sensor, I could go to 2.8 because it's about equivalent as far as a depth of field as f4 on a full frame sensor. But the reason I want that is I want enough depth of field to be able to keep her face from her eye to pretty much her nose in focus, but I don't want the background to go really heavy in focus. So I'm not going to go to f8 or f11, you know, which would make her entire uh, face and, and head in focus, but it also makes the background so in focus. You want that background to fall out of focus, have that nice kind of creamy softness in the background that really makes the portrait look wonderful. So for me, F4, if I'm turning her and I want a front eye and a back eye in focus, I may go to 5.6, but generally I'm going to use F4, which is going to give me the best depth of field. Let's quickly look at the focus difference between 2.8, then we'll go to 4, then 5.6, then F8. So let's take a look at those, one after the other. Look at that background, see what starts to happen, and you'll see why it is I choose F4. Just right there. Now we'll go to F4. So there's a look at the different f-stops from 2.8 to f8. I use f4. So for aperture, it's f4. f4, 4, f4. Stay tuned because posing is coming right up and what print service do you order when you order your print? But for now, let's talk about the shutter. The shutter just has to get out of the way. We're in a dark room. We don't have enough ambient in here to cause a problem. We actually have more ambient in here than you normally would have because we've got lights up to be able to shoot our video. Even with those lights up with the video, at one 160th of a second, we get no ambient light in the room at 100 ISO. So we're gonna set our shutter at one slash 160 and that becomes our shutter speed. Now, on most cameras, you could go up to 1 250th of a second if there's more ambient in the room in order to get rid of that ambient. But in our case, 1 160 was absolutely fine. I would guess in most cameras, I would do 1 200th of a second, and that will give you the highest shutter speed, less amount of uh, ambient light, and give you complete control with your strobe. So our shutter is going to be 1 160 or 1 200th. There you go. 160, 160. We love 160. 160, 160. So it isn't very often when we do shoots that we get to take them to a final print, but thanks to Sal Digital, we get to make a print here for Chanda. And she's chosen this Hanamule Museum etching paper. Why'd you choose that? Because it's museum quality and I love the texture. The texture is beautiful, it really is. It gives you great texture. It also gives you great color rendition. She's choosing to have it in a metal frame. It's called an anthracite. It's a kind of a charcoal gray. And then she can, it gives a great rendition. It's gonna look nice in that darker print and the green colors. So there's our final print. We'll be delivering that to uh, Chanda in the future. You'll, you'll see uh, we make that delivery when that print comes. Okay, let's talk about posing. The first thing I do when I'm posing a model is I set the stool up so that the front where she's gonna maybe put her feet is aimed towards the light. Or I put a studio box down there so the model can put their feet on the studio box and it immediately orients them to the light. I do not, go ahead and sit down there, Chanda. I don't want her shoulders to be square to the camera. So if I turn that stool around and I have the place she's gonna put her feet on it, she's gonna square herself up straight to the camera. I don't want that. I want her back shoulder to come away from us and then she'll turn her head in and it's gonna give us much nicer lines on her body. So we turn her away from the camera. That's the first thing we wanna do. So let's do a quick shot of that right there, looking right in here. Here we go. That shoulder is back in the back, very nice. I'm going to want, even though she is centered in frame, remember, anything centered in frame, I think, makes the frame less interesting. Now, you may say to yourself, well, there's all kinds of famous images and great images that are centered. Yes, but generally speaking, they are going to give you just a little bit of turn. So her body's gonna turn into the frame just a little bit. So the rule of thirds is going to allow her, maybe one eye is going to be up 
and her shoulder is down. We'll start to get some balance. Her hands are up, her head is up. We can create balance between her head and her hands. So we want to start to create compositional experiences in that frame. It's okay to push her to a little bit of the edge of the frame in that pose so she can lean. As she leans, it gives more of that S shape to the body, becomes more dyna dynamic, it looks more interesting. So we want to create that kind of dynamic pose. So even though she's in the middle, we are really going to want to try to show interesting lines as we turn her into the side and as we shoot. So let's shoot some of these and let's just talk about how she's posing. So let's shoot several images here and just look at this frame. So first off, as she's standing here, if I just get her to turn her head slightly, I am now controlling that frame much better. Push your left shoulder back just a little bit. There you go, right there. Look at how her eyes, and we start to get a great S shape on her body. Bring your head down just a little bit. That's nice. Even though she's straight in the middle of the frame, she is controlling this frame. She's, her body is moving through the frame and not just in one place. And that really makes it more interesting. We can bring a hand up if we want to see what that looks like. And that hand now becomes a balance to her face. Chin down just a little bit for me, right there. I see the top of the hat right there. Bring the hands out and drop them down. So let's really push her towards the edge of the frame. So lean way in to your left, more. Sorry, to your camera left. Yeah, just like that. Those hands together, just soften them up just a little bit. There you go. Just maybe don't bring them, so yeah, there you go. Because of the framing that we're gonna get when we make a print for her, we're probably gonna crop her hands, most of her hands out of these shots anyway. I think it's fun always to do this, and that is, I'm gonna shoot a quick, I love horizontals, because now I can push her over on the front side of the frame, and I've got all that background on the side. I just think it looks so fabulous. So there's a quick look at posing, but stay tuned for our lighting breakdown. So I love using a tripod just because it helps me to get everything kind of set in place. I'm using this Hapy tripod, which we absolutely love here at Slanted Lens. It was a great tripod platform. These travel tripods, we carry them with them everywhere we go. At some point, I'm gonna to wanna to come off this tripod because I don't need to be on it. I'm shooting at 160th of a second at f4, so I can move around. 85, I can start coming in really close. So here's my lighting setup for this. Very simple. I love this large octodome, the round uh, large octodome from uh, Westcott. It has a beautiful soft light. It's got a soft baffle inside. Just gives me a beautiful wrapping light, but I put a grid on it. And in order for that grid to just kind of keep a pool of light, it does take away some of the softness of it, but it does give me a beautiful pool of light on their face. I love these Westcott soft boxes because they're so fast to set up. Just push in there and pop them in and they're ready to go. So that kind of quick setup is really nice. It's on an FJ400, which gives me really beautiful, clean color. Love that about the FJ400s. So that's my key light. So let's take a shot of that. There's our key light. Looking right here, Chanda. The whole idea for this shot is to keep a nice green palette. We've got it in her suit, her jacket and her pants, and then we got the beautiful green hat. So we're gonna put some green on the background to be able to make those two tie together and give us that beautiful color palette always be working in a color palette that strengthens the image and ties everything together. So we're gonna put that green on the background. It's a 388 uh, from Roscoe. And let's see that with our second light here. And there we go. So there's our second light, nice. And then last, we're gonna put a rim light right directly behind her, straight behind her. It's an FJ200, it's smaller. It's easier for me to hide back there but it doesn't have to be super powerful because it's right on her and it's gonna give me a great rim light from behind. Let's turn that on. There we go, last light will do, well, if you call it a light, but it is a light in a lot of ways is we'll just shove, this is $1.80 at the dollar store. We're gonna push this right in here and it's just gonna open up all the shadows on her face and I got it in a little too close. Let's keep you looking that way. Yeah, just like that. Let's see here. That makes a huge difference, that fill card. Yeah, looking right in there for me. Right there, Chan. Just look back to me now. A little more. Right there. Right there. There we go. 
So that's our lighting setup. It's very simple, softbox, light, the green on the background, rim light from behind, and then a fill card. Let's take a look at the images. Okay, let's straighten back up just a little, yeah, right there, yeah. there you go. So look for more of these in this series. We're going to talk about lens choice and camera settings for different types of photography. So if you have anything that you'd like to hear, leave us a comment, send us a DM, we'd love to hear from you. So keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking. Might want to leave a comment too. Leave a comment! <laughs>